everybody. Welcome to another episode of Dungeon Boys. My name's Keith. Josh playing Arlo. Zenas playing as Grim. And Bryce recounting the story of Jack Law. Yeah, because today is a recap episode. Honestly, it should be a short one based on what's happened since our last one. We got been on a boat. boat. <laughs> yeah. We did some stuff on a boat. <laughs> yeah. It was exactly. a cool boat. I saw underneath, like, the inside of the boat a lot. Mm-hmm. I didn't yeah. see a whole lot of upper boat. Well, let's start back to Bird where the in, after the after the last recap, right. recap episode, you had just left the ruined amphitheater where you possessed the Mask of Many Faces. We did. And you were on the road to... To Strongwater mm-hmm. to get on a boat to head to Buck. We had tickets. At this point, you had already met. Yeah, this not, was the episode, I believe, where you allowed airports. Misako to join your party. Yeah, we met a bunch yeah. of kinkus. Grim killed all the kinkus. Yeah. Burb got real sad, real freaked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a rough time, an emotional time. Jack and Grim had some, some speakings on morality. Yeah, which was cool. I'm looking forward to more of that in the future whenever we get a chance to sit down and have conversations. It's coming soon. Yeah. Um,. So, to a podcast, you maybe. guys uh, fought. You fought an enemy in the forest, an old enemy. Oh yeah, the basilisk. Yeah, the basilisk yeah. that you set free in Ronald Witherbranch's the place. How it found us, I still want. Did we set it free? Yeah, Arlo, I think yeah. Arlo, Arlo set it free, set it free. Mm-hmm. and I don't, it, I, it wasn't like seeking you out. It was just a coincidence. Mm-hmm. I told. I stole his seeing orbs. Yeah, we yeah. took a bunch of his. Spikes, scales, scales. Yeah. basilisk scales. Yeah, Jack took his eyes and you guys took his scales because he thought they were valuable, ready to sell or whatever. Oh, we shucked that thing like <laughs> corn. No, no, we got the, the 30 spikes on its back. Right. right. Yeah. Like Spines. Three Spines. days. Yep. yep. Yeah, it took a while. It took like they three were hours. tough. Uh, but you guys made it to Strong Water. You bought some magical items from Frigis. So stuffed being most important. Yeah, so stuffed. You got a teddy bear that guards you while you sleep. Mouth of Minty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a dagger that drinks the blood of my enemies yeah. after they're dead. Magic items are a funny thing because it's like... And a bag of marbles. The thought of magic items, like, man, I, re- I-, I want to buy these magic items because that sounds cool. But then you're playing, like, f- for all intents and purposes, d and is a linear game. Mm-hmm. Like, it's hard to go back in time and make different choices. It's not like a video game where you can say, like, oh, I want to put the main story on pause and... We're gonna. I want to go and test out my items or whatever, and on this p- pocket of enemies, you know, you have to wait for an opportunity to use it. So I think magic. I think the fun of magic items is in the buying more so than the using. Definitely. Because I can't remember. I mean, have y'all used any of them? I've used their stuff. Used their stuff. Yeah. I use um, my mirror. That's true. Hey. I'm waiting. I, I'm pretty happy with the ring of tracking. I'm pretty sure that's going to come in handy later. Mm-hmm. The depth rock, I'm about ready to just throw it off the side <laughs> of the boat. Because you were convinced that it was a story a story item? Yeah, I was like, there's no way Keith would just throw in an item with such a specific purpose for only 30 gold that's so stupid in any other case. So I guess I need this. You may need it. And then I didn't. <laughs> you haven't, you haven't yet, but you may need it. Yeah. One one thing you shouldn't expect from me is to be a 100% A-plus storyteller all the time. <laughs> I may put things in the wrong place. <laughs> now, th- while we're recapping, yeah. let's go back to the birth of Dungeon Boys. Was We found an underground castle thing, so I'm thinking that it yeah. has some it, it play into that. So I'm not going to throw it over the ship. Sure, I have I lost sleep over that part of the campaign. <laughs> really? Like I, I have stayed awake thinking, like, what the heck? Yeah. What the heck is? You'll this? find out, but it'll be a minute. Yeah. But I'm trying to weave the. I'm trying to start. I'm trying to learn how to tell stories decently, you know, and I'm trying to weave in some uncertainty, weave in some world building, weave in some stuff that's that'll pay off later, hopefully. By the time we find out what it what it actually is, like the You'll story be old behind and gray. it. <laughs> no, there's a, a, this like there's going to be like. A line like going all through the land of Medin. It's just it's completely burnt behind us. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cities are gone. So your quest isn't to save the land of Medin. Your quest is why the heck was that tower underground? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm just saying. Who builds a tower and then buries it? <laughs> That's you're just all unhinged, questioning like bloodshot eyes all the time, asking those questions of 
of villagers at spear point. <laughs> at this point. So Sir Stuffed is no longer protecting Grim. He's trying to protect himself. Because yeah. when Grim goes to sleep, what he really does is just like puts his hands on his head and just stares at Sir Stuffed and just going, why was it there? What did they do? What were those hammers for? And they had four arms. I don't get it, Bear! He's, He's there just, to protect everybody else. Sir Stuffed is just back into a corner like crying with a little stick yeah. spear. <laughs> I forgot about your hammer. Yeah, uh, I should have well, kept that. Well, I still use it's the spiritual weapon is still the same hammer. He downloaded it. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. He, he uses it. Gave away Poxy. So yeah, well, now we can still kill Misiko and get it back. So important so, party member to discuss Misiko. Misiko yes. is now a party member. Misiko. You now have two following party members. You have Burb and you have Misiko, who is the yellow skinned Jack and Daxter type person with the long ears. Um, and like snake face, and he sounds kind of like this. Uh, and he is a piece as snake people should. Yeah, he's trying to get back home to Buckland. He was telling you that he lives down there, and you know he was out selling crafts and stuff, but he didn't have he enough pottery or something. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he's, he's a craftsman. Yeah. Um, he, and he left his family to try to sell, and merchants might. And he was on his way back because he didn't make enough, you know, enough funds. He was down and out. He was trying to make his way back to Buckland. Um, and so he's joined you all, and you have kind of protected him at points, and he has tried to help you at points, but not been super successful. He seems a little bit clumsy, but a little mysterious. You don't know a whole lot about him. I don't know. Um, how do y'all feel about Misiko? I don't he's, he's, like him. He's there. I think I like him. I don't fully trust him, but, I mean, if he's if, if he's along for the ride, I'm not going to deny him. Sure. You know? Every time we've made an insight check, there's always been something kind of off about him. Yeah. Like, he's never been... It's almost like he's not fully there. Sure. Well, I mean, you just described Arlo, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, every time you've made an insight check on him, nor, especially when you've rolled high, there's always been, like, a... Yeah, something seems off about this conversation, you know? Yeah. So, there may be stuff going on with him, there may not, I don't know. Like, not that he's... I, mean, I know. <laughs> to... To say what's in my mind is I think that he's kind of along for the ride. I don't think that he's so much against us as he has got his own agenda. Okay, sure. Yeah, Arlo and, and Briar just, Easy. you know, traveling from town to town. Like, that was their lifestyle up Howdy. to this point in life. Um, you know, somebody just, you know, on the road going from point A to point B. They're doing their own thing. I mean, they're just along for the ride. I... Um, I can kind of respect that, sure. but you know, I, Arlo as a character doesn't need to dig into the biz. But you know, I don't need to be fully trusting either. I'm with you. Uh, so yeah, Misko is joining you. you. Guys get to Strongwater. You buy some magic items, and then you are able to gain access to a boat through Winifred's Waddle, the spit test. <laughs> through the door, it has been discovered. Or magic spit <laughs> test, which. You can plan as you might, but you never know where your brain will take you in the moment and force you to say things that you did not plan to say. So the old Dwarven spit test. Oh, it's canon now. Um, it's canon, and they allowed you onto the boat. Your your tickets, while while forgeries were not, you know, found out. They were good enough for free just to buy them. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, free just bought some tickets, and you guys moved your cart that was full of basilisk scales and stuff onto and an Arlo and, and Jack, secretly I guess, onto the cargo hold of this very large ship. I think we landed on it. It's 300 feet long. It, it's, it's about 60 feet expanded. wide. Yeah, it's kind of this amorphous blob of ship <laughs> that's traveling. <laughs> well, we've been seas. passing through like different climates and as it gets hot or cold the ship right. kind of expands or contracts yep. that's what it is so you guys headed south I think at this point you've been on the ship about three to four days yeah something like that. we've but been on the ship for well over a month <laughs> yeah, so, yeah for us <laughs> so what's born here so what's happened what's happened on this uh, on this well, ship well like first night Burb and my armor and Misco well Misco went missing but Burb was stolen right yeah mm -hmm. Misco and Burb were both gone uh, what 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 was the explanation for that? Giant arm, giant hairy arm, ripped him through the window. Okay. Nothing, as far as we know, attached to the arm. Just, just big old arm. That's right. all we know. A big hairy arm with three claws. Three claws. Because they because you learned something about this creature by investigating the ship. We investigated the ever loving heck. 
out you of did. the outside There's of the ship. There's a lot of investigation going on in this ship. We found some scratches, and we we eyeballed those scratches. Y'all look at the scratches. We went underwater to look at the scratches. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you saw some. You saw a few things as you went down underneath the water. You saw that the scratches stopped kind of abruptly. Uh, you actually as well learned that the scratches were. They didn't seem super animalian. They mm -hmm. seemed a little bit too perfectly spaced. Fabricated, if you will. Yeah, it seemed like they could have been fabricated scratches, but we're not sure. Um, but that's really... Did you learn anything else about Burb's location or whereabouts or anything? He was in a cup. Well, yeah. Well, let's not, really? let's not get to the cup just yet. We got There's things that have happened as well, because there are other things that you guys were searching around on the, for this boat. Uh, we looked for a map. Yes, how did you learn about the map? I don't remember. So there's, there's a rumor slippies. or something, wasn't it? There's a rumor, I believe, that Misiko told you. I believe that yeah. Misiko and his wandering around the boat brought you back a, a rumor that there was a magical map on the ship somewhere that wandering Captain around. Talazar had. Uh, in the guise of Porque, because everybody's in disguise through most of the Yes, through the through the mask of many faces mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you've been using. I think Arlo is the only one not to use the mask yet. I think so. I don't mm. think you've been disguised yet. No, because when we got on the boat, you was a dog. Yeah. Yep. And Burb, Burb has used it. Yeah, Burb used it. But you learned of the rumor which led you to go up and you're trying to investigate the scratches, but also I believe Arlo and Jack snuck into the captain's quarters. We stole we did. books. We did. Yeah. We I learned, learned how to sail. Not much in, in the captain's quarters, but we did get some book knowledge. And left a message yes. for the guy. Now explain. Now give me. Tell me about Talazar and Ga and their relationship. Not good. Talazar is a big old lady with muscular pecs. She's an orc. Instead we of use boobies. the term "lady Lucy." Yeah. And she is very rude to little cursed Ga. Yeah, she's a and she's an orc. So, in this world, orcs are mainly in the army because they are bred to be kind of emotionless killers. But there are some orcs, as you all know from living in this world, that they that process fails on them, and they become regular people, and they're tossed out into regular society. This orc Talazar lady has made something of herself, and she is the captain of the great cargo and passenger ship, Winif the Winifred's Waddle. For one reason or another, you, you said they, they turn into regular people. I thought you were going to say they're tossed out into regular land. Just no, no real reason why. Just Do what now? That was the... Never mind. We I'm sorry, are I had a notification on my laptop pop up that I wasn't expecting, and I had read it. It yeah. didn't make any sense what he said. Yeah, oh. it really didn't. <laughs> okay. If it's a land where we're at, it's not regular. It was just a window into his mind that gotcha. should have remained shut. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can still see through windows, even if they're closed. Can't hear through them. That's true. You don't want to hear through them. All right, so Talazar, yes, an orc, isn't, an orc female isn't captain. Hearing looking out no. the window Ga, of the mine. <laughs> and Ga is the uh, is her slave, essentially her gnomish, lackey, weirdly first mate slave that she mistreats. Very, I picture sort of Dobbyish. Yes, yeah. very Dobbyish. Like rags and. Mm -hmm. He is exceptionally Dobbyish. But he Less can only articulate. say Ga. Mm -hmm. With with yes. much inflection and emotion, but yeah. only and, and gestures. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's not well. Yeah, he can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, when he when he has his hands on one of the books we stole, though, we learn that he can speak yeah. words mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. someone Grim don't like anymore. Yes. Yes. That someone being Gall Glittergold. <laughs> so you guys were looking for this map. You couldn't find it. You found. You took some books. You arranged a meeting with Gu, uh, and you couldn't get any information out of him. You even used these cool magic locks that they use on the cargo ship to keep people out of there that, that you know, negate magic. You tried to negate the magic on Gu that was keeping him from maybe speaking, but that mm -hmm. was impossible. It wasn't working. And so you, Gu turns around whenever you get fed up, and you hand him the sailing book back, and he looks in it, and he does speak to the book. And he, he, he says, I think, they've, I, think they've, you know, I think they know about you. He's talking to the book. And then you guys take the book, and Garl Glittergold's voice comes out of it and reveals itself to you. And he explains to you that this book is disguised, or this map. This is this book is a disguise for the map that they're that they've been looking for. And the map is called the God's Gallery Map. Which do you remember what it does? Whenever you know about the item, it reveals the location. Yes. 
the fog when, of war is lifted. When it comes to magical items created and in, in by gods and placed in the world, these special magical items, if you know about them, it will tell you where they are. So you have that map, and Garl, you know, talks to you a little bit more about some things. I don't remember everything that he said. He told you not to trust anybody on the boat. Yep. There's one character I don't think we've mentioned. Slivius? Oh, yes, Slivius Bile, yeah, who is the quartermaster of the boat. And he revealed that he is a, also a servant of the scale. <coughs> and he revealed that if you wanted any help you know, on the ship or whatever, that he would try to keep an eye out for you and look out for you. As long as he gets to keep his locks. Yeah, <laughs> he wanted his locks back. <laughs> hey, that's a fancy lock. Big dummy head. <laughs> it was a fancy lock. Let's not forget team favorite... Pink, 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 Pinkerton. Yes, we also mm. met the chef to lose. You met the, the chef, which Bryce said, "I want to go talk to the chef and cook or something." I wanted to help him in the kitchen. Yes, and I had not found out a name for him, so I tried to. Na- I named him Pinkerton Toulouse. <laughs> he is Chef Toulouse, and you had several conversations with him. You actually learned some things about Buckland and the Round Isle from him. Mm-hmm. The last episode, you sliced those potatoes so accurately. They are now used as a standard of measurement across the land. <laughs> um, this and needs to be ten taters tall. <laughs> Jack has been wanting to make some more money because he's kind of broke. Yep. Um, so he found out that you could work in the mine for a day and get some cash there in Buckland. Yeah. I'm, did I say for a day? You said for a while. Or like, just trade in some labor at the mine. I didn't expect it was going to be like a three a con- month yeah, a con- tenure. Yeah, a contract. No, yeah, you, yeah. He, he mentioned a mine south of Buckland that was always seemed to be gathering workers and needing work. Yeah. That's a way to make money. He also said that Buckland's really cold. That it, he said to be pre- prepared for some snow. I think some cold weather because you're in the south and the Round Isle can be rather snowy. Um, I'm ready to get Jack a new cloak. Yeah, and so he like said fur line around the top. You guys might need some, coat is. some it's got cooler got weather. On the top. Um, Speaking of cool, there was a gorgon down below. That's oh, true. Yeah, yeah y'all that called was a gorgon. Epic battle. Yeah, uh, you got barricade. Yeah, there was a uh, a gorgon, a big metal bull down in the cargo hold that was being transported, and someone or something let this thing out. Yep. And it the attacked Arlo, and the whole crew came down there. And tried to fight it off, and eventually they realized that it was like a mother gorgon, and there were two baby gorgons, and they eventually decided better of killing it and letting the gorgon live, and they locked him back up, her back up. We yeah. edit some nice little orc bodies. That yeah. was that was day one. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was all like day one of the of the fight or of the boat trip. And so to wrap, I guess up our kind of story recap. The last episode, you guys came up on the deck. Burb had rolled himself out of the the mug on the front of Winifred's Waddle in the same way that mermaids and stuff are on pirate ships, whatever. There's this big, hefty gal holding the big mug. And Burb was trapped in that mug, it seems. And then he rolled himself out onto the deck. Talazar was very frustrated with Gu because Gu is supposed to be tracking for stowaways. Gu fell down on the job, and so she kicked Gu in the head and either killed him or knocked him out or whatever, and he was began twitching on the ground. Then there were all the orc army men that were there to presumably search you guys down and travel over across the sea. Uh, they were concerned that, oh, we are looking for this bird creature. And then whenever that was said, Grim punched one of them in the back of the head. And it was game on. Good old Maytag. Good old, yeah. yeah. Hans Maytag. And so that battle was ensuing. Lots oh, of orcs. Hans. <laughs> Lots of orcs have died. And the very end so of that many. battle, Gu was making some sort of transformation into a creature reminiscent of the Abomination from the Incredible Hulk film. He was Gah! roaring and uh, transforming at the very end of last episode. Also noted, Burb is on the mend and is armed. Mm-hmm. He is now armed with his sword, and he's good to go. Nice. Whew! Short C, short recap. Not a whole lot of story beats going on in this portion, these last ten episodes. We've been on this boat for a long time. Anything else that you guys want to bring up or, or chat about? Not really. I think we got this. Like, I'm, I'm ready for the next episode. Like, we, we kind of ended in the middle of, like, 
a big cliffhanger there. I yes. want to see how that goes. And we will be doing that in just a few moments for us. For you, it will be another week before <laughs> you hear you hear about anything else from Dungeon Boys. Um, but y'all having a, uh, having a good time so far. I hope mm-hmm. it's been fun. Y'all need to start listening to this show. <laughs> All of yeah. you out there who can hear this, yeah, contact us on social media. Get a little sneak peek. Yeah, maybe. at Tank Media Games, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, leave us a review on iTunes, or you know, find a, there. You can go to the Facebook and type in Tank Media Network. That's a green icon. That's where we, that's where most of the Tank Media Network stuff lives. Go on YouTube, subscribe to us at Tank Media or YouTube.com/slash Tank Media Games. There are plenty of places to find us on the web. You can drop a comment to hang out with us. Our, all of our podcasts occur on YouTube as well as iTunes uh, and SoundCloud. Um, Be sure to support our sponsors who are not really sponsors. Yeah, we have a lot of sponsors that really aren't sponsors. We just like things. We think you should <laughs> like them too. But other than that, I think we're good to go. Thank you for listening to our recap. Hopefully that gets you scheduled up. Maybe you're passing through the recaps and trying to get up to date. Maybe you started with, you know, episode the 10 recap, then the, the 20, then the 30. This will be the our fourth recap episode. Yep. Ooh, one other thing. wild. I don't know at what point it will be coming in the future, but be on the lookout for some one-shot episodes. Yes, sir Where yeah. Keith will not be the DM, but yeah. a player. That's going to be exciting. We should announce that. Go ahead and announce that. That, yeah. At the end of this first season, which we are, the first season of Dungeon Boys is drawing to a close. Um, there will be a few. Uh, we may even be done with this season in the next ten episodes. It's possible, maybe. Who knows? Dun, dun, dun. But with, I would say within the next twenty episodes, no doubt, the first season of Dungeon Boys will come to an end. Once that season comes to an end, most likely, we will be moving into doing some one shots. Each one of the players here at the table will be delivering a one shot at D and D campaign for us that will probably last three, four episodes or so, and that's we'll be delivering those to you to see if that's something you guys might like to see, and Dungeon Boys will be back or in between, or we'll figure out how that works. Expanding but, on the world. Yes, we won't be uh, we won't be leaving Dungeon Boys behind after season one. We'll, we'll get tuned back into the story, most definitely. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, or listening, excuse me. Please be sure to contact us and all that stuff. And remember, most important, that we love you. Toodles. Later.